please pray with me. May the words, my mouth, the meditations of our heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Vicar Rob Bailey, and it is a pleasure to be preaching with you today. And today we're going to focus on reflection of Christ's love for us. Now, in order to do that, we need to look right at the text. Now, up there is the epistle reading. Now, I don't expect you to read it, but up here is a picture of the gospel. When I say the gospel, I mean the idea that we are sinners. Yet Christ came down, suffered, died, and rose again to be with us, to make us holy. That is up there. And yet, we have difficulties with this text. For those who aren't married, when you see something in the Bible that says wives and husbands, which, by the way, I'm not married, so I'm in this, you see this and you go, this doesn't matter to me. I can ignore it. I hope today you'll see that this passage means just as much to you as it does to couples. But there's another issue we have with it. It has to do with these two words up there in yellow, submit and head. Now, how do I know people struggle with these words? Well, when I told people my first sermon was going to be on this, some comments were made to me. Exactly. From the husbands, I heard, <laughs> good luck, vicar. <laughs> wow, uh, you're a braver man than me. From the wives of the congregation, hmm, that could be interesting. I look forward to seeing how you're going to handle that issue. Issue, I just told you our epistle reading is this beautiful picture of God's love for us, yet these are the comments that are made about it. But it's not just us that have issues with these words. Our culture does. To submit, tap out, give up, surrender. We're Americans. We don't stop on anything. Head, headship. We see this on a daily, you know, on a daily time all over the news. With our politicians or with our businessmen, CEOs, men and women who abuse their power over us. We like to be in charge. We don't like to see other people in charge misuse their power. Yet for me as a vicar, I have some special meaning in these words. I'll first start with head, headship. I have been assigned to be your vicar, which means I must put myself to the side and serve all of you. Take responsibility for your kids with confirmation and G-force to serve in other ministries of ascension. Submit. Submission. Now that's a word I have to learn a lot about. Now as assigned as your vicar, I've been assigned a supervisor in Pastor Mike, but also with Pastor Scott. I have to put myself to the side and allow these men to serve me be responsible for me for so I can learn and grow in ministry. Yet there's somebody else I need to submit to. Now as much as I hope I make an impact in all of you, I need to submit to each of you as well. Through our relationships, your wisdom, what you say and do with me this next year will make an impact that will last a lifetime in my ministry. Thanks to all of you. So why are we dealing with this? Why are we talking about submit and head? Well, Paul's writing to the Ephesians, and they have a problem. See, Christianity kind of changes the rules up a little bit. There's no longer rules or laws you have to follow to earn salvation, to make God happy. God took care of all of that. Well, if that's the case, do we actually have to follow anything? Do we have to do anything special then to be Christians? And that's what Paul's dealing with, is how to talk about that. The last two weeks, we've heard sermons on this. Pastor Scott talked about, we can do well if we can in Jesus. Pastor Mike last week talked about seeking God in those times in our daily life. So let's take a look how Paul handled it. And the way we do that is to look back at the ending of last week's reading. It says, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of the reverence of Christ. So how are we supposed to live? We're supposed to submit to each other. 
men and women under Christ. Now that sounds great, but then the question is for Paul, what does it mean to submit? So he answers that with the start of today's reading. He says, wives to your own husbands, as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself his savior. Now you might notice up there, there's a word missing. Anybody spot it? The word submit. The reason why submit is not there, because Paul actually doesn't write it. Don't worry, your English translations are correct putting it there. There's no verb. The verb relies on the previous verse, which, which means when we talk about this, heads and submission, we need to include the verse beforehand. So let's do that. Giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence of Christ. Wives to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. So the words head and submit are positive words to describe not just a relationship between a man and a wife, but it's our relationship with our Savior. That's what these words are talking about. Well, if that's the case, if they're positive, how could they have understood it back then since we still had this negative view of them? Well, here's a picture from the opening scene of Gladiator. Exact, thank you. And over here is Russell Crowe as Maximus giving a speech to his men before they charge. Now, as, the, uh, as his men submit to Maximus, that means they set themselves aside to allow Maximus to serve them, to order them for the good of the group. Maximus is the head, which means he has to take responsibility for his men. He must serve them. And you don't serve or take responsibility for someone by yelling and telling them what to do. You lead the charge. You fight with them. You're alongside the people that you're responsible for. So how does that look in marriage then? Well, in marriage, wives submit to your husbands. What that means is to set yourself to the side to allow your husband to serve you. To take responsibility for you. To let him come to you. Husbands, be the head of your wife. That means put yourself to the side so that you can take responsibility for her, to serve her, to go to her. Now you might hear me say this and go, well, that's great, vicar, but that's not how the real world works. And you're absolutely right. Because the problem is, in order to submit to somebody, to be the head of somebody, you have to put yourself to the side. We're not good at that. In fact, we're really good at putting ourselves as a top priority in everything we do. We're so good at putting ourselves first, we put ourselves before God. That's what it means to be a sinner, is when everything you do even goes before God. Which means, wives, you're married to a sinner. Husbands, and I'll say it for you, you're married to a sinner. So in marriage, we, uh, there needs to be shown forgiveness on a daily basis. Because what Paul has written here about head and submission is the perfect man and wife. We can't live up to that. We fall short. Yet Paul doesn't leave us here. He actually paints a picture of the perfect husband. He wrote, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word, so he might present the church to himself in splendor, without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy without blemish. Christ is that true husband. He put himself to decide to serve his church, to serve all of you. As sinners, he washes us, makes us clean. 
And because of that, we are now holy. We can be in the presence of the Father because of what Christ has done in our life. So this kind of sounds like what happens when you hear the gospel, doesn't it? The answer is yes, because that's exactly what's going on here. This is the gospel message. But sometimes it can be difficult to talk to people, especially those you really love and care about, those friends that don't know Christ. Maybe some of your guests here you don't know how to talk about your faith with. It can be awkward. And the answer is because it can be. And Paul realizes that. So this is what he writes. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. The two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound. I am saying it refers to Christ and the church. The gospel right here is saying that a man shall leave his father and mother. Christ came down to be with his bride. He lived with her. He suffered for her. He even died for her. But then he also rose again. Until this day is with her, clings her, hold fast to her. Which means marriage is a metaphor of God's love for his people. Why do Christians defend the definition of marriage, the idea of a man and a woman together? Because from Genesis chapter 2 all the way up to today and going forward, marriage is an expression of God's love for His people, His plan to save them. So what does that mean for us today? Well, gentlemen, Paul first starts talking to husbands. However, let each of us love his wife as himself. This is not a conditional statement. Guys, your wife will not always want to let you serve her, take responsibility for her. It doesn't matter. You still have to love her. Put her first. And when we do that, and I'm seeing someone smiling right now, but when you do that, those very actions, something happens. Pastor Bill Wordy puts it in these words. How blessed is the woman who sees reflection of Christ to whom, the, to whom she's married to. Gentlemen, when you love your wife, she gets a chance to, reflect, to see a reflection of Christ's love for her. Which means when we walk out those doors, people are watching us as a church, how we act. There's people guests here who are watching us. Yes, we can hand out pieces of paper and hold up signs but they're watching to see how we love our neighbor as ourself. Our actions out there are a reflection of Christ's love for those people. Wives, Paul ends talking to you. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Talking about submission also means respect. Your husband is not always going to serve you, He's not always be responsible for you. But you know what? He's still doing what he can. And for us, that means, for ladies, to respect. To let him know when he does fail and mess up. Not in a way that brings him down, but builds him up. Because nothing says support, nothing says care, nothing says love to a man than knowing that the woman that he loves has his back. As we walk out here today, how are we going to show respect for those who take responsibility for us? Again, our guests here are watching us. Those outside who don't know the gospel are watching. How do we show respect to those who take responsibility? How do we help our pastors, our church leaders, our small group leaders? How do we support them? Because things will happen. So when things happen, we talk to them, not in a way that's hurtful and harmful to the church, but a way that encourages and builds them up. Because our very actions are a reflection of Christ's love. Please pray with me.